Dear learners, greetings from IIT Guwahati. I welcome you to this course, Advanced Thermodynamics and Combustions. We are in the module 2, Entropy and Exergy. In this module, we have already covered two lectures on entropy. So, we are now moving for the third lecture. So, in this lecture, we are going to discuss about the following topics. Uh, that is entropy data interpretations, entropy equations, uh, entropy balance for closed systems. Of course, we will also discuss about entropy balance for the control volume. Then we will discuss something about entropy as a directionality measure for uh, thermodynamic processes, then something on isentropic processes. So, prior to this lectures, we discussed exhaustively the entropy by definitions from the second law and its consequence analysis in variety of uh, systems. In fact, the concept of, uh, of entropy was introduced through Clausius theorem and we call this as a, a com which is commonly known as Clausius inequality. Uh, now, uh, to make our measurement systems uh, uh, with the viewpoint of thermodynamic analysis for closed systems and uh, control volume. In this lecture, we are going to target on the uh, entropy balance equations and how we can form the governing equations for the closed systems and control volume, which is similar for energy analysis that we did using the first law. So, to start with the uh, uh, first thing that we are going to discuss is that we know what is entropy. So, it is a property of systems which was introduced uh, by the second law. Now, once you know the entropy data, then how you are going to interpret? So, in fact, the word entropy talks about the disorderness of the systems. It allows us to let uh, to know in a particular directions how a system is moving. So, we know that from the first law energy was introduced and from the second law entropy was in, uh, introduced and both energy and uh, entropy are the abstract concepts and we mainly dealt with energy in our day to day conversions and for which there is a uh, balance equations or we call this energy auditing uh, in which we talk about the energy balance which is comes into and out of the systems. Now, similar concept if you want to extend we are going to do it for the entropy how you are going to do that is our main viewpoint. So, now when a in a thermodynamic sense that when you talk about a property it depends on the states of the systems. For example, if I say that uh, if I say that system is at point 1 and another system is at point 2 and if you talk this entropy for the system 1 that is at state point S 1 and the system at the uh, um, point 2 it is S 2. So, this is the property dependent uh, this property is uh, coordinate dependent. So, now by definition of a thermodynamic property, if it changes value between these two states is independent on the thermodynamic coordinates. Uh, so, irrespective of the fact whether I take this path or another path when I move from system 1 to system 2. So, I say path 1, path 2. In fact, I can also target moving to path 2 in a uh, reverse irreversible path 3. So, path 1 and path 2 we can say they may be reversible, but the path to, uh, this dotted line shown here it will talk about irreversible path. So, why I am drawing to this things is here is that irrespective of whether 
uh, we are at state 1 or state 2, whatever path it follows, the if it is a thermodynamic property, it is not going to change. This is the by definition. And uh, this is also true for entropy as well. So, since the entropy is a property, the change of the uh, entropy of the system going from st one state to another is same for all the processes. And by Clausius inequality, we know that for an internal reversible processes, the entropy change S2 minus S1 is represented by the integral of dq by t. And if we go for a very small infin infinitesimal processes, then we say we can write this ds is equal to delta q by t. And this is true when the when we, we are dealing with an internal reversible processes. But what Clausius inequality says that always not all the all the processes will be reverse internally reversible. So, in a general sense, it he, he says that uh, this particular relations which is known as Clausius inequality, which is always true that is ds is always greater than d uh, or equal to dq by t. And when it is a reversible processes, the first equation holds good. Now, moving uh, further, uh, there are another viewpoint of this entropy analysis that when you look the uh, in some senses that uh, in a chemical engineering uh, personnel, they look the entropy evaluation in a different viewpoint, because uh, the when we have the chemical reactions, it is always necessary to work with the absolute entropy. So, for that in order to get S 1 or S 2, uh, we need to find out the entropy value at let us say state 1 will be addition of two parameters, one is reference entropy at a given pressure and temperature or the given thermodynamic conditions plus the entropy transfer d q by t. So, this is how uh, the entropy of by definition what we call as absolute entropy. So, the concept of absolute entropy is given by these equations where S x is your reference entropy. Now, in many situations when you deal with the pure substances and these pure substances have three different distinct phases that is solid, liquid and gas and their representation can be drawn in the property diagrams. Typically, the property diagrams are pressure volume diagram as shown in this figure or the temperature volume diagrams. So, in this both the diagrams you can see the dome that, const that constitutes the distinction of three different phases. For example, if you look at this dome, on this dome there is a peak point and we call this as a critical point. And this critical point uh, essentially distinguishes uh, uh, the two different distinct phases. And there are three different regions, one is liquid, other is vapor. Here also we have liquid and we have vapor and in between within this dome we say liquid plus vapor. So, the important point to be noted here is that for a given coordinates that means for a given pressure volume or temperature entropy we can find out the thermodynamic properties of all the parameters in the liquid regions or liquid plus vapor regions which is commonly known as two phase regions and only vapor regions we call this as a superheated regions. And if you want to find out the property value and in particular in this case we talk entropy, we essentially look for which region uh, we are putting our attention. So, for example, in this case if a system go if I locate a point 1 on this saturation curve, another point and the 2 in this again and the saturation comes and in this curve we can see the point 1 denotes to a saturated liquid regions and point 2 denotes for the saturated vapor regions. Similarly, in the T s diagram here 
and if you want to find out the property value we also define a another parameter which is called as a quality. So, this quality within this dome that means any value within this dome is decided by its quality. So, we call this as a either quality of steam or quality of uh, any uh, substance may be any refrigerant. So, for that things the entropy data can be evaluated based on the thermodynamic coordinates. So, more clear pictures is uh, shown here the temperature entropy diagrams and enthalpy entropy diagrams. And this enthalpy entropy and diagrams we normally call this as a Mollier diagrams. So, you can see here the uh, in this dome we have saturated liquid regions, uh, we have saturated liquid, we have saturated vapor and this is demarcated by the critical point C p. Similarly, in the enthalpy uh, um, uh, entropy diagram or Muller diagram. So, on this diagram various constant pressure lines, volume lines, pressure uh, enthalpy lines are plotted. So, the entire idea of showing this thing is that the while evaluating the data for entropy one can use this graphical representations to calculate the entropy as a thermodynamic property. And moreover uh, there are other equations and we call them as entropy equations and these entropy equations can be effectively used. In fact, all the uh, property data were derived from this entropy equations and if you can uh, effectively utilize them then we can uh, find out the uh, various uh, relations. And in particular the for entropy calculations the ideal choice is the temperature entropy equations and normally that equation we call as TDS equations. So, let us talk about what this TDS equation is all about and how it is derived for various pure substances. So, let us recall that uh, from the for a pure and simple compressible substances we can write down the uh, first law of thermodynamics that involves Q that is nothing but TDS in terms of en that is in terms of entropy we have du that is change in the internal energy and we have pdv that is flow work or work transfer similarly if you write this uh, internal energy as a function of enthalpy then the first tds equations is uh, derived in the form tds is equal to dh minus bdp so these two are the fundamental tds equations which are uh, useful for evaluation of entropy. Now, if I take on unit mass basis that means, if I say u is equal to small u into m h is equal to small h into m. So, m is nothing but your mass of the substance. So, on unit mass basics the entropy equations are reduced in this form. Now, if I want to apply these equations for a saturated liquid to vapor systems. So, in the for these systems we know that that is uh, pressure is constant. So, the first TDS equations uh, from the first TDS equations we can say that is uh, uh, sorry if you say this TDS is equal to d h minus v d p and in this for the saturated liquid vapors your p is equal to constant. So, d p goes to 0. So, T d s equations now represented as d s is equal to d h by t and d s is nothing but difference in between s g and s f. So, from the enthalpy informations it is possible to find out what is the entropy change between the from the saturated vapor to saturated liquid region. And another uh, expressions for an incompressible substance. So, now when I say incompressible substance we are essentially looking the regions which is typically liquid region. 
So, in this liquid regions entire uh, property is governed by one parameters. So, from this TDS equations we can uh, rewrite d s is equal to d h. d h we can represent it as C p times T that is specific in this case it is heat capacity or specific heat and uh, and P d V and since there is this in the in incompressible regions your there is no change in the density. So, this term vanishes. So, in such cases the entropy equation reduces to S 2 minus S 1 is equal to C p t by t d t and if you take specific it as a constant we can say, say C of t ln t 2 into t 1. ln T 2 by T 1. So, this is all about what you do it for the pure substance. Now, we will move to ideal gas how you are going to use the uh, entropy for the uh, um, ideal gases. So, for that case we have two states 1 and 2 1 and 2. Now, in this one we say its property or entropy we define as S T 2 V 2 or S T 2 P 2 that is point 2 and for point 1 we say S P 1 T 1 and S T T 1 P 1. So, a system goes from 1 to 2 the change of entropy is written by this two entropy equations and this is again derived from the two fundamental TDS equations. Okay. So, this is all about how you are going to evaluate entropy. Now, let us see that how you are going to going to frame a entropy audit for a closed systems. So, by that time by, by closed system I mean that a system we consider as a closed systems because it contains the same matter and there is no transfer of matter across the system boundary, but the energy interactions is possible. So, there is no mass transfer, but energy interaction is possible. Now, for such a systems we are going to find out what is the entropy balance equations. So, for that we have the fundamental expressions which is called as Clausius inequality. In fact, prior to this we have analyzed this Kelvin Planck statement and Clausius statements. So, based on this we can say that if I uh, based on their analysis we find if, uh, if you consider a closed systems which is executed by two cycles one is a through a irreversible process other is through reversible process. So, what you see here that a system or process or a system undergoes a change of state from 1 to 2 first in an irreversible process, but it returns to the um, point 1 again through an reversible process. So, in this pro in this way it completes a closed cycle. Now, for this closed cycle we can write this Clausius inequality in this manner that first one system undergoes from 1 to 2 for which there is a boundary heat transfer d q by t and while return it goes from 2 to 1 in a reversible process and in this process there is an entropy production because we need to equalize this Clausius inequality statement. And from this we can uh, write down and the fact this is nothing but your entropy balance equation. Now, let us evaluate that particular equation in a more elaborate way. That means, here we have shown from initial state to final state it goes from uh, in an irreversible path and returns to a reversible path. We write this entropy 
balance equation as s2 minus s1 is equal to delta q by t with this boundary plus entropy production so sigma so this is the fundamental equation of what you call as entropy balance equation for a closed systems now if you look at this two terms here what it says is that the change in the amount of entropy contained within the systems during some time interval is equal to sum of the net amount of entropy transferred across the system boundary in same time interval and the amount of entropy produced within the system in same time interval. Uh, in fact, uh, mathematically when we write these equations, uh, the positive or sign or negative sign. So, value of entropy whether it is a positive, if it is positive which is into the systems that means in a, uh, in a closed system we say d q when a heat is added into the system then we say d q is positive and when heat is taken out from the system so we say d q is negative. So, this uh, accordingly the change in the entropy is governed by this the way he, whether it is added into the system or taken out from the system. Now, we will now look at into another viewpoint for the same equations. So, we derive these equations uh, like S 2 minus S 1 as a integral of d q by t from 1 to 2 uh, for one parameter d q by t plus there is another parameter sigma. Let us talk about the significance of the sigma. What is the sigma? The sigma is nothing but what we call as entropy production. So, what does this mean that if a process becomes irreversible, then the entropy is produced within the systems and it cannot be a negative quantity. That is the most of most important uh, inferences from this entropy equations. So, for an irreversible processes there is a entropy productions and it is always greater than 0 and it there is a possibility that entropy production can be equal to 0 if the system undergoes a reversible process. Now, based on this the change of entropy from system 1 and 2 either it can be equal to 0 or it has to be greater than 0, there are possibility it can be less than 0. Now, let us see what are the things we are. Uh, so, so, based on this we, we have these three possibilities. So, the value of entropy production cannot be negative, but the change of system uh, of change of entropy of the systems may be positive, may be negative or may be 0. So, we have seen that how it can be positive, how it can be negative that all depends on the heat is added into the systems or heat is taken out of the systems. So, from this analysis we can now frame the entropy statement of the second law which says that it is, it is impossible for any system to operate in a way that entropy is destroyed. That means, entropy cannot be entropy cannot be destroyed it has to be produced always. Now, let us evaluate this uh, entropy balance equation with another viewpoint that means, in terms of solving the um, problems. One thing is that when you say productions let us bring the time scale into considerations. What is this time scale into considerations? Now, if you say it is a closed system. And this closed system has a boundary and across which this d q can be whether d q can enter or can be positive or negative. So, for this based on this we have this entropy balance equations. Now, if this particular systems which has a boundary and it is this boundary is as 
constant temperature T B. So, this equations can be rewritten in this manner because uh, uh, since the temperature is constant we can bring this uh, out of the integral. So, it at constant temperature T B these entropy equations can now be written as H 2 minus H 1 is equal to Q, Q by T B. Now, on time basis that means, if you say if you want to calculate what is the rate at, at which entropy is changing. So, you can write in the form of d q d s by d t and is equal to uh, summation of q dot by j t j plus sigma dot. This summation means there are there are uh, various ways that this q can come into the systems. So, entire q is governed with summation of all the number of sources that heat enters or uh, comes out of the systems. So, based on that the statement of entropy balance equation can be written as the time rate of change of entropy of the system is equal to sum of the time rate of entropy to the portion of the boundary whose instantaneous temperature is T j and the time rate of entropy productions due to the irreversibility of the systems. Now, having said this entropy balance, we are now able to uh, uh, think about an extended systems or enlarged systems. What does this mean? So, we already say that we have some system and out of which is not included in the system. So, we say its surroundings. Now, this heat interactions is always there between the system and surroundings. What I am looking at is that let us bring entire system and surrounding into one closed loop or closed platform and we call this as a isolated system. Now, when I say isolated systems it involves the systems plus surroundings. So, for that energy balance if equations we can write for isolated system is equal to 0, total change of energy system and surrounding is 0. Similarly, we can write the entropy balance equations in a different way that means, we can write delta s of isolated systems is equal to uh, delta q by t plus delta isolated and this is nothing but delta isolated is nothing but entropy productions. So, by looking this equation closely we can say that the since the isolated systems involve system and surroundings we can write delta s systems plus delta s surrounding is equal to delta s isolated and from this equation we can see that this particular term is always greater than 0 because we have already proved that delta is always greater than 0 or it only possibility is that it can be equal to 0. So, this system and surroundings and in particular we call it as a universe and for this entra um, for this we can frame this law that delta s universe is always greater than or equal to 0. So, we says that and uh, and we says that the entropy is al always produced by all actual processes and for which the entropy of the universe is always greater than or equal to 0 or in other words we can say entropy of an isolated systems increases. So, in this case the isolated system is nothing but the universe. Now, let us move to entropy balance equations for the control volume. So, basic difference between a, a, a closed systems and control volume is that that in a control volume both mass and energy interaction is possible. So, what we have is that in a 
control volume typically represented by multiple inlets or multiple outlet as you can see here so we may have something entering into the systems something leaving out of the systems so this entering we say some mass that is entering into the systems m1 and m2 and some mass which is m3 and m4 that comes out and we call this as a control volume apart from this there is energy and um, there is heat interactions q which from this control volume to the surroundings so all these things are possible and for these things if you want to write down the entropy balance equations it says that the rate time rate of change of entropy within the control volume is the sum of three terms first term is entropy transfer accompanying the by, by mass flow rate into and out of the systems second term is rate of entropy transfer at the location of the boundary at which in at um, boundary which is located at instantaneous temperature tj that means it's a boundary temperature tj and that uh, heat entropy transfer is due to heat transfer and third term involves entropy productions within the control volume due to irreversibility so from the analysis of closed systems if you enlarge it or elaborate it for control volume we can write down the entropy change for the control volume involving three important terms one is due to first term we see accompanying due to the mass flow rate so this two terms represent due to mass transfer or you say mass flow rate not exactly mass transfer you say mass flow rate and this particular first term refers to entropy change due to heat transfer across the system boundary and the last term is nothing but production and this production is mainly due to irreversibility now let us uh, move more closely and this particular slide shows the elaborate version of this differential form of equations for the control volume and the simplified sense that this particular equation gets simplified for a steady state entropy rate balance so what does here mean is that is for a steady state entropy balance we say dscv by dt is equal to 0 so based on this this uh, entropy balance equation reduces to this form now again again when i say that uh, the when there is no heat transfer so that means we say qj goes to 0 this entire equation reduces to s2 minus s1 is equal to sigma dot cv by m dot here we have assumed that mass flow rate inlet and mass flow rate exit they are same further simplifications can be also done for single inlet and single single exit control volume at steady state so in fact all these equations are uh, relevant or will be required when you solve the um, problems okay now the another aspect of entropy balance for the control volume is to elaborate the expressions of uh, work transfer and heat transfer for the internal reversible processes and when you say internal reversible processes it means 
they are the internal re irreversibilities are absent. So, for an internal reversible processes this entropy equations we can say this is this S 2 minus S 1 is equal to 0. So, we start with the first basic ex expressions Q C V by M dot is equal to T into S 1 S 2 minus S 1. And this particular term Q dot C B by M dot is nothing but T D S. So, in turn it gives an, an impression that if you draw a temperature entropy diagram when the system undergoes from change of state from 1 to 2 and this area under that diagram is nothing but Q by Q C V right. Now, so this is what we do if it is an internal reversible process for heat transfer. Now, if this internal reversible process if there is work transfer expressions we can rewrite that particular equations that if system does not have the heat transfer, but it is only work transfer is possible. We can rewrite that equations in this form. So, W dot C B by M dot is equal to integral of T D S plus uh, H 1 minus H 2 and here we can say uh, it involves the kinetic energy change and also potential energy change. So, this term is about kinetic energy and potential energy change and important point that I need to emphasize here that this T D S equations if you recall this T D S is equal to D D U plus P D V and U is equal to H minus P V and when you simplify this we will arrive at uh, B D P is equal to T D S minus D H and this is nothing but this particular term T D integral of T D S plus H 1 minus H 2 is nothing but negative of B D P and with no kinetic energy transfer and potential energy transfer the internal W dot C B by M becomes integral of B D P with negative sign which means if you can draw on a thermodynamic diagram P B P pressure volume diagram. So, the process undergoes a change of state from the 1 to 2. So, in fact there is a so this is a compression process and the area under that diagram that is V D P is shown here. So, this is the significance of the entropy balance equation for control volume, how you can represent them in the thermodynamic diagrams. So, last segment of our discussion is about isentropic processes. So, the word isentropic process we mean it is a constant entropy process that means system undergoes change of state from 1 to 2 without involving in change of entropy and such a process in a TSI diagram and HS diagram is represented here. So, these two are for pure substance. and it is governed by whether this initial state is which region it is whether it is liquid state or it is maybe mixture of liquid and vapor state. For example, state 1 here it is shown as only vapor state even 2 also is a vapor state, but 3 is in the liquid plus vapor state, but all of them have same entropy. 
So, in fact, here also all of them have same entropy. So, it is a ideal choice of temperature entropy diagram or enthalpy entropy diagram is that the vertical line indicates the entropy axis at constant entropy axis. Now, for for other situations we can refer the thermodynamic properties tables for ideal gas for, for may be thermodynamic pro properties are referred for pure substances. So, for pure substances entropy calculation is governed through the property tables. Now, for ideal gases we instead of enthalpy entropy diagram our ideal choice is the temperature entropy diagrams and in this case we can see that we can have two uh, the coordinates of thermodynamic processes 1 and 2, but within this 1 and 2 process we can draw constant volume line, constant pressure line, constant temperature line, constant temperature line is a horizontal straight line. So, we similarly for state point 2 we will have constant volume line, constant pressure lines, but one thing is that this vertical line talk about the constant entropy line and here in more elaborate expressions for isentropic process is shown in uh, the classical with a classical viewpoint of thermodynamics uh, where we find the entropy equations and this entropy equations we can start with uh, uh, this ideal gas um, situations for an ideal gas um, gases with constant specific heat for an isentropic process we can write down two fundamental equations of entropy equations fundamental expressions for entropy equations and from these equations we can recall the expressions for specific heat as a function of k and r. So, k is your here the k is specific heat ratio which is C p by C b and r is C p minus C b. By putting these equations in this entropy equations, we are able to ex derive the isentropic relations that is T 2 by T 1 is equal to P 2 by P 1 to the power k minus 1 by k that is equal to V 1 by V 2 to the power k minus 1. And fundamental equations that we still uh, use as on today in our classical things which is P V to the power gamma is equal to or k here is equal to constant. So, thermodynamically we represent in this classical diagram pressure and volume on temperature and entropy and here we draw different constant lines for entropy. So, in this uh, uh, so here the exponent uh, is represented for a constant volume process n goes to infinity ok n can be minus 1 n is n n is equal to 1 then n is equal to 0. So, from these equations we say p v to the power n is equal to constants. So, n can be 0 n can be 1 n one goes to infinity or n can go to k k is nothing but C p by C v. So, this is nothing but your isentropic equations and which we, we use in a cl classical way. So, with this we come to the end of the entropy analysis. So, before you close this lectures let us solve some uh, simple problems. So, this first problem is about entropy production for closed system.
what it says is that we have saturated water at 150 degree centigrade which is contained in an insulated piston cylinder container assembly. This change of state of this water goes from uh, saturated state to the saturated liquid state to saturated vapor stress and, and it is achieved this change, with change of state is achieved through a paddle wheel arrangements. So, schematically we can draw a piston cylinder assembly which is coupled with a, a paddle wheel arrangement. So, basically we are we are stirring this water as a result we are introducing entropy into the systems and through this entropy when we are entropy introducing the systems or there is some work transfer which is done into the systems by virtue of which the change of state has happened from saturated liquid water to saturated liquid. So, for this the first thing that we are going to we are going to calculate the work done and entropy produced. To calculate the work done we have to recall energy equation, energy balance equation from the first law that is delta u is equal to del delta u plus delta kinetic energy plus delta potential energy that is equal to q minus w. Now, here one thing the assumption that we have it is an insulated container. So, that is delta q, q is 0, but there is work transfer and there is no kinetic energy, no potential energy. So, the specific work can be now written as W by m u 1 minus u 2, the first expression. Similarly, we can get the second expression for entropy balance. So, we start with this expression as delta S is equal to integral of delta Q by T from 1 to 2 plus sigma. Here there is no heat transfer into and out of the systems. So, it goes to 0. So, we can write sigma by m. So, we can say m or you can say m into m into S 2 minus S 1 is equal to sigma or sigma by m is equal to S 2 minus S 1. Now, our main intention is to calculate what is this u 1, u 2, S 2 and S 1. So, for that we have to use steam table data. So, in the steam table, so we can say 150 degree centigrade saturated water, we can find out U 1 as 631.88 kilo joule per kg Kelvin. And again for this case S 1 is 1 1.4848 kilo joule per kg sorry this is kilo joule per kg and this is kilo joule per kg Kelvin. Then we have 150 degree centigrade saturated vapor. So, at this state we can find we can find the data from the steam table which is u 2 is 2559.5 kilo joule per kg and S 2 is equal to 6.8379 kilo joule per kg Kelvin. So, from this we can now find out what is W by M is equal to 
u2 by u1 minus u2 that is minus 1927.82 kilojoule per kg and sigma by m is equal to 6 point sorry 4.9961 kilojoule per kg kelvin so what we see from this uh, data is that this work transfer is negative so which means that work is being fed into the systems but the entropy is positive so that means entropy is always Pro entropy production is always greater than 0. So, this satisfies this fact that through a steering wheel mechanism, it is possible to change the state of water which is initially saturated at 150 degree centigrade and it can we can move to the saturated vapor through a paddle wheel arrangement. Now, the next problem is about the, uh, uh, the entropy productions for a control volume. Okay. So, the data which is given that air enters a device at a temperature 21 degree centigrade, pressure 5 bar and separate streams of air at 1 bar leaves the device at temp 1 at temperature minus 18 degree centigrade other is at 79 degree centigrade. So, schematically if you represent this is your, your device there is one inlet for which temperature enters at 21 degree centigrade pressure at 5 bar, but the air leaves in both the states 2 and 3 with pressure 1 bar, but temperatures are different the one is at uh, uh, one is at hot outlet, hot outlet is at 79 degree centigrade and cold outlet is at minus 18 degree centigrade. So, since some mass is entering and leaving the systems we say it is a steady flow device and we can say make a system boundary as this as shown in the uh, dotted lines, lines. So, what assumption that we are going to say is that there is no heat transfer and there is no work transfer through this control volume. So, two fundamental equations is required one is mass balance which is m 1 dot is equal to m 2 dot plus m 3 dot and entropy balance equation can be written as m 1 dot s 1 minus m 2 dot s 2 minus m 3 dot s 3 plus sigma dot C v is equal to 0, because we have through boundary work Q C v is 0. Now, also there is another data it is observed that 60 percent mass entering the device leaves at lower temperatures. So, from this we can say your m 2 dot is equal to uh, uh, m 3 dot is equal to 0 0.6 of m 1, m 2 dot is 0 0.4 of m 1, right. Now, when I put this equations here, this equations can now be simplified as m 2 dot s 1 minus s 2 plus m 3 dot s 1 minus s 3 plus 
sigma dot C B is equal to 0. By putting these two numbers, we finally get the expressions from sigma dot C B is equal to 0 0.4 m 1 dot s 2 minus s 1 plus 0 0.6 m1 dot into s1 s3 minus s1 and we can bring this m1 here so we say sigma dot cv by m1 dot now becomes 0 0.4 okay this s2 minus s1 can be written in terms of cp ln t2 by t1 minus r ln t2 by p2 by p1 plus 0 0.6 cp uh, ln t3 by t1 minus r ln p3 by p1. So, all the data is given. So, we have C p is equal to 1.005 kilo joule per kg Kelvin, R is 0 0.287 kilo joule per kg Kelvin, when we T 1, T 2, P 1, P 2 are given. So, T 1 is 294 Kelvin, T2 is 352 Kelvin, T3 is equal to 255 Kelvin so, and P1 is equal to 5 bar, P2 is equal to P3 is equal to 1 bar. So, by putting all the data, we can find out sigma dot Cv by M1 dot is 0. 454 kilo joule per kg Kelvin. So, this also says and this term is greater than 0. So, we can say entropy productions from this device is a positive quantity. So, in other words it gives the feasibility of existence purchase for such a device. So, we have solved two problems one on uh, entropy balance for closed systems other is for control volume. So, with this we come to the end of entropy. Thank you for your attention.